Big King James. Big King James. Big King James. Oh, we're the underneath for the slam dunk. My nickname is Big Game James. Oh, Big Game Big James, James. Everywhere I go, that's what I get. Oh. Big game, James. He threw another one down. I was known for the playoffs. Big game, James. So whenever I heard big game, James, I knew I had to take it to another level. The bigger the game, the bigger the performance will be. Shot clock by Magic. The Worthy. The Scott. Four on one. The Magic. The Worthy. Slam. In the 1980s, the Los Angeles Lakers brought a new brand of excitement to the NBA, an up-tempo style called Showtime. Put it in the highlight film. Does the crowd love it? The Lakers' high-octane offense was jump-started by a star-studded cast, but one man made his name as the finisher, seven-time All-Star James Worthy. Fast and furious is what comes to mind because it was a combination of Kareem, magic, fast play, not really authentic basketball thought by many. That is Laker Showtime basketball. And then the whole Hollywood brand. And it was transferred onto the basketball court. Before he could envision a life under the Hollywood lights, Worthy was a small-town North Carolina kid who was anything but an athlete. I was fragile, not really coordinated, kind of an introverted, shy kid. I really didn't want to play sports, you know? I was the youngest of, uh, of three, three boys, and it was kind of a mama's boy, you know? My, my brothers were eight, nine years older than me, and so I was always had to hang out with my mom and go to church, and PTA meetings and like that. But I was at the boys club. I'll never forget. I was like seventh or eighth grade. I heard the word athletic scholarship. I saw an opportunity to pay for my own college. My parents were working really hard. And that was a big concern of mine. I never got to see my parents till eight, nine o'clock at night. So I, I wanted to eliminate them having to work hard for me. So from that point on, I really got interested in basketball. Worthy would help his parents by earning a scholarship to the University of North Carolina, and in his junior season, he became a national champion. Later that year, stars once again aligned. The defending champion Lakers had traded for the top selection in the 1982 draft, and Worthy fell right into their laps. For the first pick, He's six feet nine, 225 pounds from North Carolina, James Worthy. Being drafted number one and coming to the best team in the league who had just won the championship, I was extremely fortunate. But the new first rounder quickly understood his place in the Lakers pecking order. I knew one thing, I knew to shut up and be quiet. Cause I was looking at not only Magic and Kareem, but Jerry West looking over you like a big brother, you know. So usually the number one pick usually comes in, he's starting, he's the star. And I looked at that roster and I said, uh, you know, the first thing is I gotta just be patient. But I did look at Kurt Rambis. He couldn't jump, he, he wasn't a scorer. And I said, you know, I'm probably gonna get that position. And uh, I remember the first day of practice, Kurt Rambis, he beat me so bad. I wasn't going to get that position. When Worthy did get playing time as a rookie, he provided flashes of the offensive explosion that would later become his trademark. Here's a pass stolen by the same guy, Worthy. Here he comes all the way. Slam dunk. Basket count. Foul Romar. Listen, the hand for this rookie. And in his second season, he was an important part of a Lakers team that found itself matched against the Boston Celtics in the 1984 Finals renewing a one-sided rivalry forged in the 1960s. The Lakers had never beat the Celtics, and it was a lot of pain. It was that deep. So we knew what was at stake, and we knew what we were representing, and we knew who we were representing. With the Lakers up a game in the series and clinging to a lead in the final seconds of game two, 
the budding star showed he wasn't quite ready for the final stage. Worthy will inbound to Magic Johnson. Worst comes to worst, the Celtics will have to power. There's a steal by Henderson who lays it up and in. We could have had him in game two, but uh, a bet pass by me forced an overtime, and they went on to win that series in seven games. Worthy and it's back off. Caught the Henderson, he lays it up and in. I still see that replay all the time, and I got to learn to live with it, but it never goes away. Coming up. Worthy fakes, comes down the middle, does a 180 turn, he's in the air, he throws it up and in! Oh, what a play! The Celtics don't have anyone to stop Worthy. Los Angeles is down, but not out, as they try to wipe the slate clean in 1985. <laughs> to dance on that parquet floor and be the only team NBA history to have done it, that still stands out. After the Lakers saw the 1984 finals slip out of their grasp, they spent the entire next season fueled by the need for redemption against the hated Celtics. They beat us. We didn't feel like we really, we lost that one. We feel like we gave it to them. And so we had to lean on each other. So we were on a mission in 85. Downtown Freddie is trapped. Steal. Worthy. Look out below. I had learned a lot from my teammates, and I had began to start. And I was also about to have a breakthrough as far as feeling comfortable in the NBA and making a name for myself. and becoming a threat, so I was geared and anxiously ready to go. Our fast break was in gear, and we were tougher, we were more physical, and the chemistry was good. L.A. cruised through the regular season and the playoffs, and they couldn't have scripted it any better. The finals presented a rematch against Boston. Once we got there, you know, the regular season was tough, but once we knew that we were gonna see them again, you know, you got an ML Carr, Cedric Maxwell giving you the choke sign all the time. You know, Bird and McHale, and the whole Boston mystique. We were bitter, you know, we were bitter. We had to answer all those questions, what happened. I was determined. I mean, there's no way I was gonna lose again. Oh, Worthy. The Celtics don't have anyone to stop Worthy. With Worthy emerging as an offensive force, the Lakers finally broke their Celtics curse. We're the first to ever win a championship on the parking floor. So doing it there, you always want to do it at home, but I wanted to do it in Boston. I just feel so elated right now, Jim. You know, after last year, we had to sit in our hotels and our apartments and our homes and just think about getting back, you know, and we were determined. They've had a stranglehold against us and we have been nothing but reminded about it and I think it's sweeter now because uh, we have broken a dynasty against us. To be the only team in NBA history to have done it, that still stands out for me. Hopes of a Laker repeat were crushed in the 86 Conference Finals, and once again, a painful loss motivated Worthy and his teammates. We thought we had a chance to back-to-back. Back-to-back became a, a big emphasis, you know, because everyone had won one. I mean, Lakers won against Philly, Boston won against the Rockets, so back-to-back -back had not been accomplished. So we thought we were gonna do it 85, 86. So the 87 season, I think subconsciously, we were looking at two seasons, not one. Down the middle of Matthew, right side of Worthy, laying up and in. That looks like the Lakers. We got our chemistry back. We got distracted a little bit, but we got our core group back. 
I mean, we ran through everybody. I don't think we were going to be denied in 87. The 87 Finals provided an unforgettable moment. Magic Johnson's heroics in Game 4. But it was Worthy's defensive play in Game 6 that catapulted the Lakers to victory and began the legend of Big Game James. They had been running this play the whole game to Kevin McHale where they would try to draw the double team and hit someone at the free throw line area. I knew I probably could get it in the first, second quarter, but I, I let it I let it go until the perfect moment when we needed it. Worthy saves it from Magic Johnson and a brilliant play by James Worthy. I kind of set Kevin up because I was letting the pass go, letting it go. And then I anticipated this one. I had to catch up to it to the point where I had to die. And um, I think I slid about eight feet. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful dive. The champagne is flowing in the locker room of the NBA champion Los Angeles Lakers. Coming up on Big Game James, the James Worthy story. I feel grateful to be alive and living in Los Angeles. And I'm guaranteeing everybody here, next year we're going to win it again. We wanted to hurt him. <laughs> Because what he did is he, he sent a, a signal out to the rest of the league that, yeah, we think we're better than everybody else. Now you know I'm really crazy. There's no one compared to Worth because he's so quick. He's so agile. He can get to the basket quicker than anybody I know as far as his size. When I stop Worth, it's like a great, great feeling because, hey, this guy here get to the basket in the blink of an eye. We now return to Big Game James, the James Worthy story. Remember when everybody said we were too old, we're too short, we couldn't play anymore? That was a long time ago, wasn't it? I feel grateful to be alive and living in Los Angeles. And I'm guaranteeing everybody here, next year we're going to win it again. We wanted to hurt him. <laughs> because what he did is he, he sent a, a signal out to the rest of the league that, you know, yeah, we think we're better than everybody else. Now you know I'm really crazy. It was probably the best coaching move he ever performed because he knew that we needed to be challenged. You know, I'm thinking tomorrow I'm gonna start getting in shape because I knew what kind of year 88 would be after that statement. As the Lakers prepared to back up their coach's bold prediction, James felt the responsibility to shoulder more of the load. Underneath with a slam dunk. Oh. From my perspective, Magic and Kareem, they had carried the Lakers so many years and won so many championships. I just felt like it was my turn to help my teammates out. I had to step it up. Magic whips the ball to Worthy. Here he comes underneath. Lay it up and in. Worthy broke his game down to the basics, continuing to hone his technique in order to gain every advantage possible. It was all a science to me. The first two steps out of the box were the most important that you have to practice and stay down and then come up. Coop down the left side of Worthy. Boy, does he go to the hoop. Play it up, score it. Boy, he was streaking. I could calculate steps. And I knew once I got to half court, based on where Magic was, I knew three more steps I was, I was airborne. Oh, what a play! You have to learn the footwork. You have to know where to lead your defender. I always know who my opponents were. And I always studied their footwork. I always knew what moves I could perfect based on that. Nibbets comes underneath. Reverse layup. Good. Oh, what a shot. It was a lot of hard work, the toughest season, physically and mentally. But once we got to the playoffs, we said we're here and we're not going to be denied. But for all the challenges faced by the Lakers, 
they hadn't yet met the equal of the bruising Detroit Pistons, their opponent in the 1988 finals. They were the bad boys, and they were physical, and they're gritty, and what they take away is everything that I like to do, is inside post up. And so I knew it was gonna be a challenge for me. It was just pure guts and who wanted it. That was what that series was all about, but that's what gets me going. So I felt right at home playing that. The series was a battle between a tested champion and a motivated contender. Pump fake, he shoots, he's fouled, and got it, got it, go! It was only fitting that the title would come down to a decisive game seven the perfect showcase for Worthy to cement the legend of his famous nickname. Ooh, Big Game James! Whenever I heard Big Game James, I knew I had to take it to another level. Worthy dominated the game, recording a triple-double, 36 points, 16 rebounds, and 10 assists. Worthy's been a big gun for the Lakers. Worthy with a game of his life. Worthy down the middle. He's in deep, he throws it up, falls in! This crowd's getting into it now. You're in a zone like that, you feel unstoppable, everything kind of slows down, and no matter who's in front of you, you feel like you can take them. And I just, you know, it was just fun, and it's just what you live for in those moments in a game seven like that. The game ends. The Lakers have won it again. Los Angeles became the first NBA team to repeat in nearly two decades, making good on Pat Riley's guarantee. And the finals MVP took great pride in being able to seize a leadership role on his veteran team. To operate off of them for so many years, you know, catch all the stuff from Magic and play behind Kareem, it was finally great to put them on my shoulders for at least that one game. Vacation time! Vacation time! History has been made! Coming up next, Big Game James calls an end to his career and takes his rightful place among the Laker all-time greats. I knew what being a Laker was all about. Pride, because you look at who you represent. Magic and Kareem, you know, Jerry West, Will Chamberlain, Gail Goodridge and those guys. So yeah, it became more than just being a professional basketball player. It's really scary how good he is, and especially when it's the big game or the big series. He just comes out and he wants to win. The bottom line, he wants to win. And if he has to take the game and, and win it himself, uh, we'll all get on his back for the ride and let him take us to victory. We now return to Big Game James, the James Worthy story. In 1988, Laker fans took to the streets not only to celebrate another championship, but also to honor a dynasty. And their finals MVP, James Worthy, coming off one of the most impressive performances in postseason history, stood at the pinnacle of his career. All right, inbound pass, Worthy anticipates and steals it. There he goes for the slam dunk. But the Showtime Lakers would never win another title. In 1989, they fell short of a three-peat against the very same Pistons. And in 91, they gave way to a new dynasty. It was then that Worthy saw the writing on the wall. It's a tough decision. You know, I had a couple more years left. I probably could have, you know, probably not started, but I probably could have played a year or two. But it wasn't fun anymore. I used to love to go to practice and be around my teammates. But once the fun was gone, when I found myself not wanting to do that anymore, I, I, I knew it was the end for me. The NBA had seen number 42 finish off his final fast break. Big game, James Worthy. But in time, that number would earn a permanent place in Lakers lore. For 12 great years, James Worthy played this game as you would want a player to play. The consummate professional, sacrificed many personal goals for team goals. James Worthy is one of the most beautiful 
basketball players to have ever played this game. I knew what being a Laker was all about. Pride, because you look at who you represented. Magic and Kareem, you know, Jerry West, Will Chamberlain, Gail Goodridge and those guys. So yeah, it became more than just being a professional basketball player. All the way from Tobacco Road to the roads of Hollywood, I can only say that it's been the most rewarding, the most exciting experience that I've ever had. And there's no question that you are the greatest fans in sports. Thank you. James Worthy played the game with humility and uncommon grace. And that's also how he accepted the accolades that he collected during and after his career. If you just do your job, most likely any individual honors that you deserve will come your way. I remember making an all-star team. I was, I was like, wow. And then being picked in the top 50, that was a little strange for me because I didn't care about individual stuff. Coach Smith says, if you don't think about it, you'll get them. You've been a special part of my life for which I'm very grateful. Big game, James, come on up. And then to be appreciated by writers and your peers and coaches for your body of work to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, it really puts the explanation point at the end of that sentence. Wow, this is, uh, this is the ultimate. It's just nice to be appreciated, man. To be inducted into the Hall of Fame, you have to have some skills as a basketball player. But more importantly, it's the people along the way that, that nurture you. I don't know if I'd change anything, man. I've learned from everything. I've learned from the good things, I've learned from the bad things, and so it's made me who I am, and I think a lot of people use that answer, but I, and I wouldn't change anything. But if he had to do it all over again, there is one piece of advice Big Game would like to give that awkward kid from Gastonia, North Carolina. I would say to myself, just keep grinding it. Just keep grinding out, because you're going to make it.